You're tuned into the Jersey Comic Crew. In this episode, we are talking about our initial reactions to HBO Max. Do we like it? Do we love it? Is there a lot of content? Find out now. HBO Max, as a recording of this, is officially live. Uh, for those of you who have HBO Now or any other HBO apps, it a billion other ones changed over. Like I noticed for me, like I have it on my Xbox, uh, it changed over automatically. Oh wow! So uh, we want to discuss our first impressions, uh, our initial reaction to the HBO Max, right? Yep. So definitely, you know, we go to the home screen, we see you know a bunch of suggested movies and TV shows, right? They have very little original content, but they have some at the top. But what I think they did a cool job with is like when you scroll down to the bottom, it kind of shows you, oh, Turner Classic Movies, shows you Crunchyroll, shows you Cartoon Network, shows shows like the building blocks of like all these different stuff. Ghibli Studios, if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. Uh, So just looking at it, I was like, I was kind of blown away. I was like, wow, they really have all this content. But then when I kind of clicked through the stuff, like there was a good amount there, but I felt like there was stuff missing, right? Yeah. So like Cartoon Network, there was, you know, there's a lot of good shows on there, like Foster's Home and a bunch of other stuff. But I felt like there were some shows missing. Yeah, man, where's my uh, Courage and Cowardly Dog? Right. And then I click on DC and I I was under the impression whether it was just us doing research or us being a super fanboy, I was going to see pretty much all of the DC Universe library there. Like um, nothing. Yeah, it's very, very select few stuff in each of the categories. Now, maybe that's just because it launched, but like, as impressed as I was, I was kind of like taken back, right? So it was like two steps forward, one step back for me. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this has all the stuff. Oh, it doesn't have everything, but it does have all the Harry Potters and all st- uh, Lord of the Rings. So I was like, that's a great place to start. And it has a lot of the old favorites, all the old Godzillas. So if you want to jump on those, why not? Uh, I really, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about this, Chris. So, what was the experience for you when you first opened the app? What did you think? Yeah, um, I I normally have HBO. Uh, it's a part of my cable package anyway, so this wasn't an extra cost for me, which is basically the reason I updated mm-hmm. to it. Um, I basically I had HBO Go on my smart TV, um, so I basically just kind of took that out and downloaded HBO now and just re-logged in through my cable provider. Um, I know for a lot of people it was difficult. Really? Um, Yeah, a lot of people based on either their cable provider wasn't ready for them yet, um, or if you have the Fire Stick or Roku, it's not available at all yet. Oh. Um, Probably because of Amazon Prime and all this stuff. It might take a couple days. That is... Uh, I believe combined, I looked up the numbers, that's another 80 million people uh, they could be getting this to uh, with the mm-hmm. Fire Stick and Roku alone. Okay. So all that uh, is really kind of difficult to comprehend. Um, also, there's a lot of confusion between Go, Now, and Max. Yes, there is. A lot of people just thought it was another version of HBO Go or HBO Now. They didn't realize it was this massive update with with a lot of other companies entwined yeah. to make it the streaming service for HBO. Um, so I think uh, the launch was really messy um, as far as just getting it out there. We talked about this mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago. With there really isn't a lot of marketing for it. Um, I think in like the only thing I can think of is is kind of WB's and and AT and T's own hubris, right? everyone's at home because of quarantine you're looking for content i I feel like they took a step back on the marketing front maybe obviously because of payment issues we don't know what they're doing with furlough and all that other stuff could be could be but a multi-billion dollar corporation that didn't market this that well and didn't have original content that you want to see day one one. Mm -hmm. is a problem well then maybe they view it as more of an update than a new app you know what i mean like if i'm an executive i'm like oh it's an update I yeah, which 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 is arguably there because it's the enti- it's basically the entire HBO library that already existed on any other HBO platform plus all this other stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, my initial thoughts when I when I logged on and, and opened it up, a lot of content, but definitely a lot of content I've already seen. Um. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't seen the Harry Potter movies or the Lord of the Rings movies, I don't know really what to tell you. 
Um, if you if, yet, if you haven't seen the DC movies that are available, the few that don't really know what to tell you. But it's still good that they have them there. You know what I mean? That's great. You can get them when you like. I I think within a new streaming service, if this is what they're saying, like, hey, which the idea of it is phenomenal, right? HBO Max is HBO plus all these other like AT and T and Warner Brothers mm-hmm. companion companies together to create this, you know, oversized, like in your face content. There is over ten thousand hours of content on it already. Yeah. That's no small feat. Um but if you don't have original programming that is new and that people have to go see, um, you're missing out on a lot of people who are going to upgrade to HBO or who are going to add the app for $15 a month, which is a lot, mm-hmm. even though you're getting HBO. Um, and just you're, you're also kind of narrowing yourself to, all right, people who are already paying for this, we can keep them without upcharging, which is really good, right? Like, yeah, like that that can technically add to your initial numbers, right? Like you're like, yeah. all right, these people aren't going anywhere. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, but yeah, I, I think it needs to add basically original content. And I think the DC side of it alone is, is kind of horrific. Um, so looking at this, I feel like in my opinion, it's not necessarily the original content that I have the issue with. Right. Uh, I don't think I necessarily have an issue with this at all. I was just like, let me, let me start over. So, like, this app has a lot of good building blocks, right? A lot of fundamentals. I see I can see this uh, app app's potential skyrocket, right? You have all these different tabs, if you will, that can expand. You know, you have Cartoon Network, and that library could keep growing. So, yeah. maybe it only got approved for X amount of shows, and then more are going to get added on. We've cool. seen that with Netflix, right? Shows come on and come off. So, it might be dealing with those individual shows and just getting the licensing, right? Uh, they have Crunchyroll, which, you know, still surprising me, but we have some anime there. You know, not yeah. a lot of anime, but I'm sure they could keep going. And I'm sure that's, you know, them negotiating with HBO and Crunchyroll, at and a lot of moving parts. Really, Netflix was the only other home for a lot of anime selections or somewhat anime selections. Well, unless you have the Crunchyroll <laughs> or VRV app, right? Unless you have the anime-specific one, right? Exactly. Which, which almost now seems like, unless you're like, into the deep anime stuff, it almost seems ridiculous to not combine it with something else, right? Like, I mean, I personally, I have VRV, which is like the Crunchyroll, like just a newer version of it, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but I know that like Crunchyroll only has license to certain shows and not, it's just like any other streaming service, right? And then same thing with DC. So they, they have a lot of moving parts, so I kind of gave them some slack, especially what's going on right now. And I can definitely see this taking off if done right, right? It's already, it's already, you know, good in my book. I already have HBO and you're adding more content. I'm a happy camper, right? Now I can watch all of the Harry Potters, Lord of the Rings, some more anime, some other stuff. It's great. Watch all the Harry Potters and Lord of the Rings when you've seen them a billion times and they're on TV syndicated all over the place. That's like, I'm not. If you have cable, but a lot of people don't have cable anymore because they have all streaming. Like I don't have cable. Up in my True, room, at least. but I, I don't know if I'm going to a streaming app to, like, I go to streaming apps to watch, I mean, this might be me personally, but I go to streaming apps to watch stuff I haven't seen. I, uh, I more, do more, Way more so than not. Um, you know, whether it's Netflix, whether it's Disney+, Plus, I'm going to see stuff I haven't seen yet. Um, and HBO Max so far, like, obviously I've had HBO, so I have a one-up. Uh, and again, I'm not complaining about it, because yeah, it's yeah. a massive amount of content. I'm just saying... From a perspective, when you when you launch something this big, first impressions are so key. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of people who are just underwhelmed, not by the amount of stuff. The content is actually a little overwhelming. Yeah. How many movies are on there and how many, you know, TV shows and old... I mean, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is on there, Family yeah. Matters, like stuff I grew up with. Um, but the amount of content isn't the underwhelming part. It's the amount of new or original content, right? Like, we know Doom Patrol Season 2 has moved over there, yeah. but it's coming out in mid-June. Mm-hmm. We know they're working on, like, a Green Lantern show and, and Justice League yeah. Dark, but none of that stuff was ready for day one. I, I, I think it's hard to... I, I think for them it might have been a little easier because it's like, hey, it's still HBO. Like, if you didn't have HBO and you want this plus everything else, you still get HBO. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that may be opening a door for a lot of people, but a lot of people who have HBO are kind of like, hey, what else you got? Yeah, I mean, it could be. Like, I view this, like, overall, do I view HBO Max as a failure? No, I think HBO Max is a success, but from us in the more entertainment-focused world and who have our finger on the pulse, we all thought this was going to be a home run just to destroy everything, kind of like Disney Plus was or was not, depending on your personal opinion. We were like, okay, now this is going to compete directly with HBO, I mean, with Disney Plus, and we thought we were going to get all this new stuff or a little bit more hype or at least fuller catalogs of the other stuff, right? And we didn't necessarily get that yet, right? So that kind of puts a sour taste in our mouth, but I can't sit here and talk to you guys and say, I'm disappointed with this. I, I'm mad at HBO. I like this is nothing but good. I just yeah. expected more. And maybe yeah, I, it's, I, me, it's, that, po- it's that a positive. Be selfish. That could be just me, like, because as, as fans of content, like Chris knows, comic book fans included, we're selfish. We want more. We always want more. So now the question becomes is it us wanting more? Is that the issue? Or is it HBO and Warner Brothers dropping the ball? You know what I mean? I think it's a little of both. Like I said, I, I think. I think you have a, a kind of a, a very odd situation in an odd world right now, right? Like you, again, we don't know what their financials are with, with COVID and, and quarantine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, do I think they, they use a little bit of the quarantine method to market themselves? Yes. I, I think they were hoping, you know, there's a, there's a billion people at home that can't leave their house. What are they going to be doing? Looking for content. This will drop. We'll be fine. We don't have to overmarket. We don't have to c- commercial here, you know, every YouTube ad here. Um, but what they were marketing to me when they did market was kind of ridiculous. Like, I don't care. Most people don't care about an Anna Kendrick show as like your launch title. You know what I mean? Like, that's not the driving force for an entire streaming. Network. I see. They could have they could have literally just put Watchmen up there or, or HBO content and been like all this plus all this and that's all you needed um you know what i mean so like stuff like that i mean there's a new looney tune show that's kind of like the classic style looney Mm -hmm. tunes which is awesome i checked out the first episode already it's hilarious it's great um it feels like watching it as a kid not in 60s because i wasn't alive then but you know as a kid i know you don't um you know I i think the other side of it is they're kind of hurting themselves um they still have dc universe which is doing god knows what yeah it seems like they're taken away from each other, right? Like, it's like, it should be all no all one's umbrella because it's not creating healthy competition. It's kind of like eating at each other, right? It's like cannibalizing themselves. That's the better word. Yeah, and all the content that you had or have on DC Universe, which, again, as we've said a billion times, is hard to get. impossible to access through television. Like, it's basically only for phones and laptops. I was under the impression that, like, we would get... I don't know, like I said, this is probably misinformation on my part. I was like, oh, all the DC Universe is going to be on HBO Max when the yeah. app launched. I was so excited to show Heather, my fiance, the Harley Quinn animated show, right? I was like, you got to see this show. It's fantastic. Funny as hell. Uh, like, it's going to be on here. We'll do it. And I was like, oh, it doesn't even have all of the stuff here. Like, there's like a lot of movies are missing. The most recent animated stuff. I was like, oh, it doesn't have it. But as new control, we can watch that. She it doesn't watch. have any of the 90s. Bruce Tim stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the library for the animated movies are just like three Batmans and a Wonder Woman. And Justice League Judas Contract. That's it. And like Teen Titans. They have the old Teen, Teen Titans Titan show, which is great. Yeah, they have all the Teen Titans animated shows. But they don't have any of like the really good stuff or the movies. Like they really were just like, just put Batman on there. Yeah, they put Batman. I think what else is there? Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Justice League. All the new DCEU stuff is there, mm-hmm. naturally, because it was on HBO anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but none of the, like, old Supermans, the, you know, the the bat before Batman 89s, like, none of that stuff is on there. Um, and like I was saying before. The history thing, yeah. it's really just, like, if you like Batman, Here's or Batman. if you like, like, you know, or, or Teen Titans for the cartoon, here it is. Um, I think so I, I think it's hurting it. Debating, yeah. Like, I think they're, like, trying to get on the same page, like HBO and DC, like those subsidiary companies are trying to like work out a deal to try to figure this out where they both can profit more. I hope so because I 
right now, like with this, with, with the way HBO Max is, and again, I will say this, like probably the most perfect, flawless, like no glitchy with that amount of content and that amount of storage space. Mm-hmm. Um, like it came, it comes up, it starts like it is professional HBO to the end. Seamless. Yes. Feels like HBO. It feels like, okay, they put a little extra something in this mm-hmm. because it's premium. Um, I don't think, I don't think DC Universe is needed anymore, except if you're doing, if you're really pushing that digital comic platform. Yeah. I don't see the, the need for it. You could like, again, what you said it in the beginning, right? They had the big HBO tab for different subsections and you have all these other channels and, and streaming services where your mm-hmm. country will, your country network, you know, a ton of classic movies, which is awesome. Um, all this stuff in there and you could just have a DC universe part, you they know, even, just even have an add on, right? Like if you wanted the, the all of DC universe content through HBO max, maybe that's a dollar more subscription for the month. And I'm sure people are like, yeah, why not? Yeah. So like, uh, you know, uh, add that on, um, or transfer some of the shows. Doom Patrol is already transferring over. That was a big uh, set. I think Teen Ti- uh, Titans. Titans. Not there. Well, Titans. I think in the future is supposed to be on both. I think. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. Um, Harley's not on there. No. Which I think Harley would be a much bigger audience show if it was on there. It's funny as all hell. Mm-hmm. Um, King Shark is the greatest character on that show, hands down. Let me ask you a um, question. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, like. The, I guess not a question, it's the question, right? Question. Where does HBO Max stack up, where does it rank against the other streaming services for you? Uh, for me, it's like three or four. All right, what's, what, go through your list then. What's one, two, three? I still think Netflix is number one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the reason is just it's been out so much longer than everyone else. It has so much content. New and old, original, like, uh, and Disney Plus is number two. Okay. Um, and the reason Disney Plus is number two, even with the new awesome content that comes out, it's still building a library of original stuff. Um, like Netflix came out and it had like House of Cards, it had all this original shows when it was like, hey, streaming, welcome to the future. You know what I mean? Um, and HBO just doesn't have that show that is like, mm-hmm. Boom in your face, like Mandalorian. Boom, we drop. So this is number three for you then? Uh, three or four, yeah. I, I think Amazon Prime has some really good stuff. I think uh, if you have Hulu without ads, it has some really good stuff. But I would say this is probably my number three. I, For me, I think this is probably number four. Yeah. I think. Three, it's in that three or four range right I now. Think- Number one, I put Netflix, uh, like all the comedy specials, the, all the original content, the shows that... Oh, the have. comedy specials, too. Like, Netflix kills. I think number two, I put VRV for all my anime needs. Uh, I think three is Disney. Four, Better than Disney? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the amount of content that's on Crunch, uh, VRV, the animes. Uh, my Hero Academia alone beats everything that's on Disney+. Plus Until so, the new stuff comes out. For me. For me. For me. For me. Before everybody starts crucifying me. It will. <laughs> all right any last yeah, thoughts I, yeah I, I would say um uh, like like we mentioned right like you just mentioned something really big like netflix's array of things right it's not just the netflix movies which are normally terrible They're most not cases. bad terrible um i i refuse like i still refuse to watch bright like i refuse to that watch wasn't that bad with aliens um like try to be mib but not uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I, I think like Netflix shows the comedy specials they do, the amount of money they put into you know guys like Tom Segura, um, and and the Dave Chappelle stuff is, is fantastic. Eddie Murphy's supposed to have a special first time in like thirty years. Yeah, uh, later this year. Stuff like that is really amazing and stuff you clamor to, right? Like regardless of if it's a series, excuse me, of like five seasons or just like an hour and a half comedy mm-hmm. special. Disney's building that, right? Once we start getting some MCU stuff in there, some more Star Wars stuff. Exactly. Uh, some more, I'm sure, Disney, like, princess original content. Some miniseries Ooh. television shows are going to start up. Um, they're going to expand the Star Wars world within Disney Plus at this point. Yeah, it's still new. It's still very new. Um, but 
you drop Mandalorian day one. Very People good. are clamoring for it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think as far as HBO, again, I'm not upset with HBO Max. No. As far as I'm upset with AT and T. Um, I, I think AT and T as a whole has not proven to be the best like business father, if Could that be. makes sense. Could be. Um, as far as decision making, I think everything's kind of they're always with DC and everything that kind of goes through Warner Brothers. Everything always seems late to me. Whether it's they're late to get to superhero movies, they're mm-hmm. late to get to the idea that you have to make great plot lines and not just throw heroes out there. They're late to get to an overall streaming platform with DC Universe. They're late to make it what it should be and not only accessible on your like two inch screen phone. Mm-hmm. And and to me this seems it, it seems a little messy in the beginning. Even though again, ten thousand hours of content, but like how many times can like a lot of the stuff is syndicated on TV. And I know there's a lot of people that don't have cable, but there's also a lot of people who still do. And how many times can you watch Friends over and over again? I can't watch it at all, but that's just me. Uh, like, how many times can you watch, you know, Harry Potter over and over, or Lord of the Rings? Like, those fandoms are massive, and they deserve it. But if this is special, give me a Harry Potter show. Give me a Lord of the Rings show. It would be good. So give me an original content that... You know, streaming services to me are not just, hey, I have HBO. This is easy. It, I don't have to pay an extra dime. Boom. Streaming services to me are, how am I going to take people who don't have this yet and make them need it? Not want it, have to have it. That's the goal, to right? To me, that is original content that you can't do anywhere else or you can't see anywhere else. And if, if CBS can do that by itself with, you know, let's, Star Trek let's, let's and stuff like they that. They barely did that, all right? But no, they, they have numbers, and it's working. So, like, they're doing it on a streaming platform that you're paying monthly mm-hmm. for Star Trek, because CBS owns all the rights. So if they can do that with that, and you're telling me HBO hasn't gotten something out, I, I think it isn't HBO's fault. I think it's the Warner Brothers, AT&T, DC well. mindset right now. I think there's a lot of mo- more moving parts with that, that they have to, like, all these different companies have to get on the same page. So that's why. But... To, uh, overall, guys, you know, we're not, we don't hate HBO Max. We just see a lot of potential in it, and we wish some more of that potential was now instead of later. <laughs>